And I'm pleased to invite Professor Margalit uh, Finkelberg, who is Vice President of the Academy, who is a great classicist, and uh, whose idea uh, the conference was. She came up with the idea of why don't we do a conference on the Palestine mandate? And it developed from there. So please, Margalit. Thank you very much, Billy, for your kind words. So welcome, dear Professor Harel, uh, Professor Melman, Professor Kozma, dear participants and guests. Welcome to the British Mandates in Palestine Conference. Although de facto, the, the British rule in Palestine started immediately after the end of World War I, it was formally in force only from September 29, 1923, when the League of Nations officially entrusted the British government with a mandate for Palestine. This is what marking a century from the start of the Palestine mandate, the covering title of this conference stands for. The objective of the mandates over uh, former territories of the Ottoman uh, Empire was to provide, quote, uh, administrative advice and uh, assistance by a mandatory until such time as they are able to stand alone, end quote. In Palestine, the mandate required Britain to put into effect the Balfour Declaration's national home for the Jewish people, side by side, with guaranteeing, quote, the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine, end quote. The mandatory government, uh, headed by a uh, high commissioner, stimulated the economic development of the country and enhanced its infrastructure in all areas, road construction, electrification, uh, systems of water supply, uh, public transport. Following the successive waves of Jewish immigration, in the years of the British rule, Jewish population of Palestine grew from uh, 56,000 in 1918 to 600,000 in 1947. New settlements and towns uh, emerged. The economy expanded. A Hebrew education network was created. Cultural life flourished. In 1924, the Technion, today the uh, uh, Israel Institute of Technology, opened its doors for the students. In 1925, the official opening of the Hebrew University took place. Following uh, the right to run their internal affairs that British authorities granted the Jewish and Arab communities, the Jewish issue established the elected assembly and the national council. The British administration uh, recognized the Stadrut, the General Federation of Labor, as a body which is representative of the Jewish population of Palestine and entrusted it with the regulation of immigration quotas. The Istadut also developed a network of institutions that uh, were in charge of education, healthcare, financial services, uh, construction, uh, trade, industry, and sport, uh, in many respects fulfilling the function of a state in, in the making. But the years of the mandate were also years of growing tension between the Jewish and Arab communities, which signaled the beginning of the Arab-Israeli conflict. Quote, and Britain was caught in the middle. High Commissioner Arthur uh, Wokup uh, compared himself to a circus performer trying to ride two horses at the same time. End quote. This is taken from Tom Seger's the One Palestine Complete, Jews and Arabs under the British Mandate, a brilliantly written, even if a somewhat controversial book, which throws much light on the period. Competing interests of the two populations led to the 1936-39 Arab revolt in Palestine, and then, some years later, to Jewish, Jewish insurgency, which culminated in the establishment of the State of Israel. Today, 75 years after the end of a bitter struggle for independence, the British mandate has taken its rightful place as a formative period in the history of the State of Israel. It is not only that the very existence of the mandate made the establishment of the Jewish state possible, and it is not only that quite a few institutions and elements of infrastructure inherited from the British rule are still with us. 
the years of the British mandate, have become an integral part of Israel's collective memory, and judging by the fact that to this day, uh, one of the principal streets in both Jerusalem and Tel Aviv bears the name of King George V, the uh, balance of this memory is on the whole positive. I wish you all most fruitful conference. Thank you.